Hey everyone, it's me, author Alexandrian Fonte. Hello, and we're back for more. So, we took the three days off just to see how... You guys have to excuse my hair, it's crazy. I washed it yesterday and then tried to um, flat iron it today and it's not working. <laughs> um, but anyway, so... We're coming back off of the three-day hiatus um, to basically my son to drop us out of that um, algorithm that we were in so that now we'll show to more, um, more to viewers out there. So tonight's review is done of, wait for it, wait for it. Okay, so tonight's review is of author C.C. Perkins, Love is Dangerous, book one, and it's called Corrupt Love. And this is the cover. You guys see it? You see it? You see it? Okay, so, and I can see all of my crap back there. <laughs> okay, so this is the cover. Now, this book follows, follows Cora. Okay, so, um, basically, remember I said for each review that I do now, look at my crazy hair, um, for each review that I do now, I'm going to take notes. So, um, basically, we know we're on point. I mean, Jen knew she was on point anyway, but whatever. Um, so, now, um... We're following Cora, and I'm assuming that's the way it's uh, pronounced, because it's C-O-R-R-A. But then I have a character that's C-O-R-R-I-N, and I spell it Corin. I mean, I pronounce it Corin. So, I'm assuming this is Cora. Okay, so Cora is a hit woman. Basically, she is who you call when you want a job done. Um, and so, she's pretty much lived the life of a hit person, like, she tries not to have any attachments, um, as especially romantic attachments. Her best friend Kay and her um, Kay is a cleaner, I believe, or like a fixer or something like that. So they're both in. Um, I'm so sorry, I don't remember exactly what it said that she was, but she's she's pretty much in the violent business too, and so. Um, so basically, um, she, her brother's name is Salty, so that kind of like gives you an idea of what type of uh, person K is. Okay, and so this is our, just so you guys remember, it's Thursday, so this is our mainstream Caucasian author. So this is a mainstream Caucasian book. Um, that doesn't matter because it's still a good book, but um, just, you know, letting you guys know that too. Okay, so, okay, and then Dan... Dan is basically, to me, tragically OCD. Now, um, I believe, so I'm not going to say this is completely 100%, but I believe he's like an investment banker or something like that. Um, I looked through the book to find exactly what it is that he did, but it didn't, I don't remember it saying. Like, it gives you an idea of his job, and like, it tells you the day-to-day -day stuff of what he's doing because of the fact that his boss was one of, uh, his boss was one of, um, uh, Cora's hit, you know, targets. So, it gives you the day-to-day run-of-the-mill of what Dan's job actually is, but I can't remember if it said he was what it was. It, I just figured like he was like an investment banker or something. But anyway, he has like serious OCD. Um, he has serious issues. But it's kind of like a given because like his mom is like a gambler, like a serious gambler, um, who basically Kay had to tune up. <laughs> and then his dad was like an alcoholic. So I guess you figure, you know, this kid like growing up in this environment, he has a lot of issues. So he doesn't know how to deal with new situations. He doesn't know how to deal with new people very well. But he's like the dependable guy that you can always call. I mean, come on, his name is Dan. Um, that you can always call that he'll do something for you. He'll fix something for you. Um, 
but he's just he just gets like a little like overwhelmed at you know different situations that he gets tossed into and then um so basically uh he had a pretty crappy childhood. It was sad, you know, um, especially with his parents like that. And so when the book opens, um, Kara just finished the job. Um, and then Dan's dad just died. So like I said, he was an, uh, he was an alcoholic. The mom was a gambler. And so he's freaking out because basically in his life, the dad has pretty much T taken care of you know the mom and gotten her out of these scrapes and these situations and stuff and so in this beginning you know the dad dies and now he's just like oh crap you know do i have to take care of her do i need to take her in but then he's he he he's you know overwhelmed like oh my god i can't deal with this situation so um so him and ryan which is dan's best friend they decide to go running or but Ryan wants to go running. He decides to go running with him. He's cool. They go running in the park. And this is basically where they meet Kay and Cora by accident. Because Ryan is so huge. And Kay is so, from the way she described, the author describes Kay. Kay is so tiny. She's probably like my height. Maybe 5'3", five, 5'4". Five, and so um, he pretty much barrels her over. Ryan does. And then... K is, I mean, uh, Corn is saying they're laughing hysterically because you pretty much see her flailing under this big, huge truck of a man. And so she's like, get off me, you big oaf, blah, 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 blah. You know, they, they have their little conversation. And then Kara throws a party at her house and um, Dan decides to go and then... Here's the thing, Dan is so straight laced, like not only is he OCD, but he's like really, really puritanical and he's like a 30 year old virgin, you may as well say. And so instantly, like after talking to him, the first thing Kara wants to do is to corrupt him. And so basically that's what she sets out to do is like to corrupt his innocence and, you know, pretty much just take it from him. And so, um... So basically, she throws the party at her house. They start dancing. Uh, he has he drinks like he's never drank in his life. He's like the typical virgin with all of this stuff. He doesn't drink. He doesn't smoke. He doesn't do any of that stuff. He's very wholesome and clean cut. And so they decide to dance. He's like enamored by her body and stuff. And so basically, they go... To, they go to her bedroom to like hook up together and then he passes out. So they don't actually wind up having sex. And so after this, she pretty much sets her sights on him and she sets out to uh, make him hers. And so, so the book was really cute. Um, it was like one of those, uh, it was a, what I like to call a steady read. Um, for me, there was no big, huge bang. That's something that would like really throw me into the book where I was like, oh my God, you know, but it was a steady read. It was a good read. So, um, and sometimes, you know, that's fine. That there's nothing wrong with having a steady read. I've read some really good steady reads. So there was nothing wrong with it. I did see a couple of typos and then there were some instances where it would say chapter 17, but then the heading right under it would say chapter 18. So that was kind of wonky and kind of weird. So I don't know if that was like my Kindle acting crazy or if maybe the the author didn't catch that in in the actual uh form formentation or, or foundation or formation i'm sorry i'll get it right in a second of the book so basically um those are the only things that i saw that were wrong with the book um the book flowed like i said it flowed really well um I would have liked some more comedy in some of the situations because like when he falls asleep and where he falls asleep, that could have been like hysterically funny. Um, and so there would have, it would have been nice if there was a little bit more comedy, but like I said, this was a good book. It was a steady read. It was good. And if I had to start this book, I would start a solid, 
uh, three stars because of the fact that, you know, the way that the book was um, um, comprised, it's not Kindle ready yet. Like there were, it needs to be formatted to where it reads just, you know, perfectly. And unfortunately I didn't see that. And like, like I said, like the chapter headings were off a bit, like it would say, um, chapter 18, but then it would be, uh, like chapter 17 at the top. And then it would have chapter 18 in the next bullet. So that was like, kind of weird but beside that I mean it's a really good read you guys will enjoy it and the fact that she's a hit a hit I started to say hit man <laughs> and the fact that she's a hit woman is really cute as well and the whole point is is that this guy just comes out of nowhere and she falls for him hard and so now everything that she's believed, like her, her, the way she's lived her life, the way she's tested things, it's all being completely thrown out of whack because here comes this guy that she had no expectations of it. Um, if I had to say anything that I didn't like about the story itself is the part where he finds out what she really does. I kind of feel like that was a little unrealistic um, because I feel like a hit person would be all about self-preservation. So I don't think they would have stayed there. So if anything, that's, that's probably why I'm giving it a three stars only because I kind of felt like that wasn't realistic. Even though we're reading a, a work of fiction, I get that. And I totally understand that, which is why she still gets a three because it's still a good book. I just feel like the character would have got ghost, especially if, she is a hit person. So that was a little bit, you know, I, I couldn't suspend, you know, reality for that part. It just didn't seem like, you know, it just didn't seem like it was, it would work in the flow of the story. Because, I mean, come on, Kara's tough. She's badass. She's got tats. You know, she also like rescues uh, young girls. So they don't get caught up in situations like that. She teaches them to fight and all that stuff. And like, I understand that, bam, she got hit by love. And so she's changing everything about herself. But I still kind of feel like she would have got ghosts. There's no way she would have stayed there. So that is the only reason why I'm starring at a three stars and not a three and a half stars. Because I kind of felt like she, the character herself, the way she's described, the way she's portrayed, I don't believe she would have stayed there. I really don't. So, that is pretty much it. Once again, the book is called Corrupt Love. And it's a very good read. You guys need to totally go out and get this. And it's by author C.C. Perkins. And this is the first book in the Love is Dangerous series. I'm, I'm a believing because it's, it's like a hashtag and number one. So usually that means that this is the first book. So um, make sure you guys go out and get it. It's really good. And I believe you guys will like it. And like I said, she's a hit woman. So you guys need to go out there and get that. And that's pretty much it it now tomorrow thank you guys so much for coming back and tuning in to us um we are basically going to be back on full steam so um tomorrow we will be reviewing well i won't be reviewing but jen will be reviewing still haven't been able to get her to come on the channel guys but um We'll be reviewing, yeah, yeah, darn it, it's here somewhere, just a second, yep, y'all know me, if you don't, you know by now, try to find it, okay, there we go, okay, tomorrow we will be reviewing, <laughs> John Doe, Double Tap, All Gas, The Forgotten, by Kevin Macklin. This is basically a, it's called an urban night story. 
So, Jen will be reading it. Um, and here's the cover. Let's go. Okay. It's called John Doe, Double Tap. And it is an Urban King story. So, I mean, Urban Night story. So, Jen will be reading this. And this is who we'll, we will be reviewing tomorrow. So... Hopefully, you guys, you guys will pop back over and tune in. And like I said, we will be going full steam on... Um, we actually aren't going to do a review for Saturday because I want to... I haven't read anything in the days that we've been off, so I want to be on point. And Saturday, we will be reading... Um, just one sec. I mean, I'm sorry, not Saturday. Sunday, we will be reading... The Secrets of Hawthorne House by Donald Firesmith. Yeah, Firesmith. I believe that's how he pronounces his name. But anyway, that's what we will be reading on Sunday. He is a YA author. And here's the cover. So this is what we'll be reading on Sunday. So make sure you guys tune in. Tomorrow we will be reading Double Tap by Kevin Macklin. Or John Doe, Double Tap. By Kevin Macklin. And then on Sunday we will be reading uh, The Hawthorne House. So make sure that you guys tune in. Uh, basically that's pretty much it. I thank you guys for coming back. Also on my own channel I'm doing Snippet Sundays. Snippet Thursdays and Snippet Sundays. Where I actually read you a snippet of one of my books. Today, I will be doing a contemporary romance. Uh, last Sunday, I did um, England's 19 Crimes. So, if you guys like interracial historical romance, pop over and check that out. Um, it's called Sn Sunday Snippets, uh, England's 19 Crimes. And then today, I will be reading a contemporary romance. So, I do a snippet every Thursdays and every Sunday. And that's pretty much it. I will see you guys tomorrow, and I really, really hope to see you out there. Thank you so much for waiting and coming back to us, and get those submissions in, because we still want you to submit. I will see you guys tomorrow.